Hey, it's been a while and um, these guys are the reason for that. In this video, I want to share with you some ways I found to use EV on my pretty old laptop. Let's begin. The first tip is acceptance. Now, I'm not trying to sound like a sage or anything like that, but something that really helps is knowing that if you have a computer that doesn't meet the minimum requirements for EV, which in this case is um, a graphics card that supports at least OpenGL 3.3, then some things are likely not going to work as expected. Having this in the back of the mind helps when the frustrations or some things not working certain, which believe me, happens a lot. With that out of the way, let's begin for real this time. Tip number two is to try it again. If you do something with EV and it results in a crash, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to work. Chances are your PC was just overwhelmed, so give it another try. But if the crash seems to be consistent, then it's likely not going to. Pretty great, I know. Unfortunately, I can't show an example right now as this is not something I can intentionally replicate. Tip number 3 is to disable ambient occlusion. Having AO enabled does make some scene look pretty, but I found that for me it almost always resulted in a crash, especially whenever I try to render. Yep. So I recommend checking your scene and seeing if having it enabled does make your scene look better and if it doesn't, just disable it and save yourself the trouble. You're probably wondering about other scenes that look better with AO enabled. That brings us to the next tip, which is to use an alternative render method. This method isn't only limited to rectifying issues with AO, but for any scenes which seems to render in the viewport, but once you go on to render for real, it crashes or brings up weird artifacts and results. You can find this option underneath the view, viewport render image. This takes a snapshot of your current point of view using your rendering settings. And since EV is a what you see is what you get rendering engine, this works really well. To get what you would actually render out if you use Blender's normal rendering method, you want to be in camera view and disable all overlays, else it also renders them. And if you have some modifiers that only show up during render, you want to enable them for your final renders. This method though does have some downsides, first of which is that Blender does not natively recognize it as an actual render so it does not deliver passes and the compositor does not automatically recognize it. You're going to have to save your image and manually bring it into the compositor if you want to do some additional compositing. Also, if the quality seems low for some reason, you can bump it up by increasing the resolution percentage to anything greater than 100%. And the last tip, which is kind of a long one, is to use CV. CV is a non-official way of referring to the hybrid of Cycles and EV. This is really helpful in times when you can't seem to get what you want using EV for a bunch of reasons. It's best to get assistance from Cycles and use the results generated in EV. There's two situations where I personally use this. First is in texture baking. On EV, for me at least, I can only have five image textures for a single object. More than that and my object becomes pink. In this situation, I need to find a way to reduce the number of textures I'm actively using. Looking at my node setup for this character, I have three textures which make up a color. The freckles, the base color, and the color variation. These are taking up three of the available five texture slots. So if I were to try to add another texture, this happens. But if I were to switch to cycles, I get the expected result. So what I did in this case was to bake it into a single texture which is the one I have over here, and use the result for my base color, and EV works again. I'll put a link in the description for the method I use in baking if you're interested. This method also works for some procedural textures that might not be working for you when using EV. Another use for CV is with passes. In this case, you can render your scene with a minimal sample count in cycles and save your passes individually. These passes can then be introduced in the compositor to get the effects you were previously missing. Surprisingly, this works really well. And these are how I've been able to get lots of frames that are used for little animations for my most recent scenes. There is also the Workbench Render Engine, which I use a lot for an even faster render, but I feel like this one has gone on long enough. If you'd be interested in learning how I use that engine, let me know in the comments and I'll try making a video explaining it. And now for a little plug. If you have access to a 3D printer and feel like supporting these channels, most of the models I show in this video are available for purchase on my station store. Also, you can support me on Patreon for $1. Then you get access to my blend files for these projects I use in these tutorials and 
pretty much anything I work on in the future. I'd really appreciate your support as I'm wanting to get a newer PC so I can explore more. Thanks for sticking with me to the end and if the Lord tarries, I hope to see you all next time. Bye.